Well, it's not an overstatement to say the left's attacks on America's border security suddenly have become an attack on America itself. On Friday, at an ICE facility in Aurora, Colorado, hundreds of extremists stormed the grounds. They pulled down an American flag and tried to burn it. Then they sent a Mexican flag up the flagpole to replace it. The display was awful, and it was deeply revealing of their motives. But what happened on Saturday in Washington state was even worse than that. Willem von Spronson, he was linked with the Antifa domestic terror movement, attacked an ICE facility in Tacoma. He was carrying an AR-15 and firebombs. He torched several cars that apparently hoped to burn the facility to the ground. He was shot dead before he could kill anyone. Online, members of Antifa celebrated their fallen comrade. Facebook banned Alex Jones, as you know, because he's a hate monger. But Facebook has no problem hosting Antifa groups, including the Seattle Anti-Fascist Action branch of Antifa. On Facebook, that group posted this, quote, When our good friend and comrade, Willem von Spronson, took a stand against the fascist detention center in Tacoma, he became a martyr who gave his life to the struggle against fascism. Today, we stand strong in our support for yet another martyr, martyr in the struggle against fascism. May his death serve as a call to protest and direct action. Keep in mind, it's a lunatic who showed up with, an, with a semi-automatic rifle, the kind they want to ban, by the way. Vance Bronson may have failed, but others should imitate him in launching more terror attacks on American soil. That's what they're saying. Facebook doesn't have a problem with that, of course. Well, you'd think all of this would spark some concern. Liberals might tell us it's time for a national conversation, maybe gun control. No. Antifa has the implicit support of the respectable left. So far, not a single Democratic presidential candidate has condemned Saturday's attack. Hard to believe that's true. We hope we're wrong. Maybe they condemn them during this show. But as of right now, we believe, again, hope we're wrong, that not a single Democrat running for the nomination has condemned a terror attack that took place on our soil yesterday, Saturday. But why would they condemn it? They're on board with it. Just a few weeks ago, the New York Times published an op-ed calling ICE agents complicit in, quote, mass atrocity, and then called for ICE agents to have their names and home addresses publicized. So why should we be surprised when people try to murder ICE agents? Kim Kelly, who describes herself as the labor columnist at Teen Vogue, pause for a second and just let the absurdity in. The labor columnist for Teen Vogue. That's how insane this moment is we're living in. Anyway, the labor columnist described Vance Bronson's terror attack as, quote, righteous sabotage. She compared him to partisans fighting against the Nazis and then called for more terror attacks. Quote, as Van Spronson and the many other heroic comrades before him have made clear, there are many ways to fight back against a violent fascist regime. Perhaps it's time for more of us to put our thinking caps on. The decadent rich really are unbelievable. And Kim Kelly is, of course, a member of the decadent rich. So is all of Antifa. These are the most privileged people in our society, of course. This isn't the working class rising up. This is the ruling class punching down. When Kim Kelly, by the way, isn't writing about the labor movement for teenage girls, she's also a contributor at NPR. You couldn't make this up. In other words, government-funded news outlets are directly spreading the message of people who promote the murder of government officials. It's sick. This country's laws cannot survive when powerful people endorse violence against those who enforce the laws. And a country can't survive when it's run by people who hate it. 